Welcome to episode 63 of the Series of Out Security Podcast for November 6, 2013. Brought to you by the Center for Education and Research and Information Assurance and Security, or Sirius, at Purdue University. This week I'm joined by Keith Watson, not Mike Hill, and I'm Preston Wiley. And Keith will be starting out this week with his article. All right. So this week we have an interesting interesting mystery, if you will. Um, this article is dealing with a, a piece of malware known as bad BIOS. This stirred a little bit of controversy because of the nature of the malware as described by one individual. And balancing that out is the fact that the individual who's made these claims about the malware in question is a well-respected security professional. So basically, uh, security consultant Dragos Ruyu, and I'm not sure if I pronounced his name correctly, I apologize if I butchered it, which I probably did. We'll call him Dragos. Uh, Dragos had something in his lab which he found to be pretty unusual. He had some fresh copies of an operating system installed with updated firmware, and it started exhibiting weird behaviors. Uh, it wouldn't be able to boot off the CD-ROM, for example. Uh, it wasn't able to delete data and make changes in configuration. Um, and this rather weird condition kind of spread to other systems. Uh, including different operating systems. So uh, the OpenBSD system he had installed on another machine started having similar issues. Um, it also started transmitting uh, data, which seems a little strange as well. And so they, he went back and erased these systems to start from scratch, and, and still, this keeps popping up. Now, this is three years down the road. He's been having similar issues of this. And even with wiping the system, the conditions still come back. So some of the questions are related to, well, what is this? Is it a BIOS-level malware attack? And the other interesting phenomenon is that it appears to be jumping across to machines that are not connected to a network. They're air-gapped. So there wouldn't be any way to distribute this particular piece of malware to another computer system. Uh, air gapped also in the, in the sense that uh, even the USB keys used to transfer files around uh, were kept isolated. And so some of the theory about it being transferred around might, have, might be that it's occurring over USB and that there's actually a vulnerability in some USB driver where the just inserting a USB key uh, causes a problem, overloads a buffer in the USB driver, which allows us to spread onto the system. So there's a lot of questions about how this is moving around, the most interesting of which is that it could be using the sound card in the computer to generate uh, what to a human might seem like white noise, but could be used to transmit data. Now this is probably sounding a little far-fetched, and, and trust me, it does sound a little far-fetched. So that's the big mystery, you know, is it is it actually doing this or not? Uh, Dragos is a well-known, well-respected security professional. His job that he does is to reverse engineer these things and try to determine how malware moves around. He also runs the Pwn to Own hacking competition. Um, he's an organizer with CanSec West and PacSec conferences. These are also well-known security conferences. So it would be really unusual for someone in, as a security professional to make wild claims like this, that would just damage his reputation as a, as a well-respected security professional and probably affect his livelihood too if nobody can trust him to provide accurate information. So this is all very concerning, um, but he also hasn't helped himself out by sharing a lot of what he's found. I mean, he's provided some blog posts about details, but not actual samples of this particular malware, and, and so that's that's problematic as well. So this kind of mystery is is bad BIOS a real thing or not? Um, 
So there's a couple articles that we've included about this particular issue, and there's a there's commentary from Bruce Schneier even, who's looked at the article and he's he's not sure what to make of it. When it sounds, you know, and he read it and he said, it sounds like a hoax, but when you consider the people involved, maybe maybe it's something to be concerned about. Um, so there's a lot of questions about it. We, one of the articles we posted questions that the analysis is wrong. Um, and talks a lot about you know the, the limitations on BIOS and UV uh, uh, bootloaders and those sorts of things. Where how could you have malware that does all that that they claim does all these things? <clears throat> how would that be able to spread to systems that have limited uh, BIOS capabilities? So it's a big mystery here, um, and I, I think it'll only be solved if we can get somebody to. Uh, you know, provide a little more samples of what this thing does, although it sounds super scary. Well, I think one of the interesting analogies in the in the, in the articles was it's equivalent to a Bigfoot sighting. Yes. <laughs> in that, you know, here, Good point. yeah, okay, sure, is it is that, is that really Bigfoot or is it some person in a costume or, you know, whatever. I mean, it's like, Show me the proof before I'm going to believe you that this is really what happened. And even even the I believe even the individual. Well, I can't remember what, what did you say his name was. Dragos. Dragos. I believe he even doubted. He was he was, I think he doubted some of his his claims. Uh, really, I think he was doubtful of sure. what exactly was what was what was going on. But um, based on his experiences, he he had some. Theories on what was happening, and he basically just wanted to be informative about what was going on, and not necessarily, you know, say this is exactly what happened, and what happened. This is this is what I did, and this is what my conclusions are, or hypothesis. And uh, he admitted that he he had help from others, but his stuff wasn't peer reviewed or anything like that. So I think he's being forthright on on on, uh, on you know putting the information out there so that others can um, if they have the same experiences they can um, build upon what he's done. Sure. Um, and one of the questions we have is you look at malware like Stuxnet, which was government backed malware to target a specific a very specific uh, facility, <clears throat> it's not you know, within the realm of possibility, it is within the realm of possibility that <clears throat> government funded activities in this area could have produced something that may do this, although there's a lot, I have a lot of, I have a hard time saying it because it sounds so odd, <laughs> so I guess we have to wait to see if there's more information or more places in which this type of malware start spreading. Hopefully it doesn't, because if it's true, well, we're in, we could be in a world of hurt for a while. Yes, it seems odd, and, and it seems odd that, that he would be potentially a target for something like this. I mean, he's a security researcher, but he's no more, you know, a target than other security researchers, I, I would say. Um, Unless there's something unique that yeah. somebody is trying to test his abilities. I don't know. It's a little, a little odd. So, very weird. Yes, I, I, I did, I did read the article. There's a lot of, there's a lot out there about this. It seems after, after this got published, a lot more, a lot more came out of it. So uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the chance to read everything out there about it. But the stuff I did read, it, it I mean, there's. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of questions, a lot of uh, unanswered questions, and and uh, and things like that. And I think I think I hope that we hear more about it. Go you know hear kind of maybe have a conclusion or something. But I, you yes. know, I'm not sure if we will. I mean Stuxnet, you know, was a, was an example that we did end up pretty much figuring out <coughs> what it was. What it was doing, where it came from, and all that. I mean, there's still some unanswered questions about it, but yes, there, there was actually there was well, there was analysis by industry, yeah, the malware industry, trying to figure out what this thing is because it spread beyond its target, right? Yes. It started loading itself on other systems. 
But due to that analysis, we had a better idea of the capabilities of the people who wrote it. Right. And then later in the news, it became uh, uh, more of a stated or a leak, I think it was. Somebody leaked the information indicating that the Department of Defense, in conjunction right. with some other right. uh, places, had, a, had put this thing together specifically to target. But it seems to me in this case, we don't even have anything to analyze. We have anything in so we, yes, we, just have, we just have symptoms. We don't have, yeah, a, exactly. we don't have a, exactly. any code or anything like that. Yeah, and so, so yes, that, we'll have to see how that uh, turns out. If he's able to share something in a safe way that people can Maybe use a sunspot spot or something. Yeah, sunspot, spot, solar yeah. flare, or something like that. Could have been that Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Electromagnetic uh, energy, UFO, you know, something like that. Yeah, Over yeah, there, yeah. 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 that's it. So, okay. okay. Anyway, so I, I maybe maybe we'll find out more because I, I think I mean it seems to me like after this article there were a lot more articles, and so I'm hoping that maybe there will be some more people who. Look, who will look at it and well, say, sure. well, this is weird. Yeah. Well, yes. So, and, he, and this person's been dealing with it for years. Well, absolutely. This isn't something that, this is, this is, a, this is an article posted after years of, of looking into it and saying, this is weird. Yeah. So. And, and so this is a good way to transition from the really weird to the reality, <laughs> yes. which also seems weird. Right, which is which is what I'll be talking about, <coughs> which is um, yet another leak, another another release from uh, the Snowden uh, archives, I guess. Snowden archives. Snowden archives, as you call it. Um, this is about uh, the NSA um, infiltrating uh, some private fiber optic links uh, of Google and Yahoo. Um, and being able to essentially collect data from these private data links uh, without any sort of, you know, legal requirements or whatever. So um, basically, they, they from from what I understand from the leak is is the allegedly the NSA uh, tapped. Uh, Google and Yahoo's fiber optic cable links between their various um, data centers outside of the United States. Um, <coughs> so they did this outside of the U.S. Um, <coughs> which, well, in between U.S. data centers yes. and foreign data centers. Right. They, they, well, yes. Yes. And, um, and uh, I guess uh, from the article, they, they talk about um, how the, the companies, you know, you need, in, in, in the instance of Google and Yahoo, you need a highly uh, available uh, system of servers. So the way they, they manage that is they put a bunch of data centers throughout the, the world and they pay for these private, that, uh, as in they only, they're the only ones that use them, fiber optic cables that span thousands of miles across areas and um, they there's this ex expectation that these are private and secure and only they're going to be using them and uh, there's this little post-it note or something and then <laughs> on the post-it post note um, that talks about them being able to essentially Look at traffic from, the, in this instance, Google um, through a private, uh, a private data network, and uh, essentially um, bypass SSL and all the other security protections that that should be in place. Um, and I think there's still there's still questions on on it. Uh, obviously, it's just leaked, but the, I guess the NSA response, did the NSA respond to it? The head of yes. the NSA responded to it and kind of talked about something that wasn't even related to it. Um, how, oh, we, we are, the NSA, we don't hack servers or 
or databases, which this isn't a server or a database hack. This is a, or whatever. This is them putting a, a wiretap, essentially, on a fiber optic cable that is supposed to be private. So it would be like them coming to my house and tapping my phone line, mm -hmm. um, essentially, is what, is what would happen. And, and from my understanding, in order to do this, they have to break into places oh. and, and, and do this. This isn't something they, they can do, right, like, just, they can't just go to somebody's, like, they, like somebody could go to my house and they could tap my phone, assuming I had a landline phone, which I don't. But if I did, somebody could do that. Because my phone box is outside of my house, but in this instance, I think that's not necessarily the case. So, right, yeah, it, it is possible to tap fiber, and for the longest time in the security community, the belief was you couldn't tap optical fiber without breaking it. And if you broke it, then the link would die, and then it would be obvious that somebody was tampering with your, your fiber. But um, some security researchers a couple years ago, and probably NSA long before then, figured out a way in which you could tap fiber without breaking it and without disrupting the communication going on through it. So no one would be able to detect that you'd actually were sniffing the traffic flowing through the optical cable. And I'll have to go look up that, that article, but that was many years ago where somebody said claimed they could do that. So I, I have no doubt that the NSA could actually tap fiber cables, which you know, for the longest time we recommended you, that it wasn't possible to do that. Which may mean that they didn't have to break into anything. Maybe not, but they had to get to the physical so they cable at some point, which I don't doubt that they could do. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they have lots of assets that that and people with lots of sneaky abilities to go and do that sort of thing. Well, so I honestly don't know much about the lane of cable and how it works or anything like that. So well, the cables have to terminate somewhere right. and, and change from being something you dragged out to the ocean to mm -hmm. pulling it up on shore and then connecting it up to the rest of the network. So. There are physical locations, and they can't always be monitored 24 But the other point is, they can be bypassed. If you're talking about thousands of miles, that's thousands of miles of potentially unprotected cable. That if you well, true, just and, put and it slap a device can, onto it. Yes, exactly. Like I can point out so the, the the NSA and, and the U.S. Navy tapping a telecommunications cable between two Russian bases uh, using the underwater cable, right, right. Uh, using a, a thing that sat over the cable and used induction to to uh, record all communications traveling between the two bases. So this is not outside the realm of possibility here. But what's interesting is, as you pointed out, the, N the NSA General uh, uh, Alexander basically said, oh, no, we don't do that. We don't break into servers and we don't compromise U.S. citizen information, uh, completely missing the fact that we were talking about intercepting communications between data centers. And so some of the response that, that I saw were probably that obviously Google and Yahoo are probably reevaluating or actually out there right now trying to figure out how to encrypt the data between them. Right, I, and I was just going to mention that point, some sort of point-to-point -point encryption over your fiber optic right. network right. or something like that. It seems like maybe in order to prevent this from happening in the future. Right. So and so some of the information from the, the leak also indicated that they don't, while they can collect all the data flowing over the cable, that's a lot of data that to deal with, so they probably don't store it all. But in conjunction with the GCHQ, which is the British equivalent of the NSA, that they had a, a system that could collect a large amount of that data and they could filter that out and, and say what they were interested in. So since it's all, in theory, unencrypted flowing through that, since these are private private backbone connections, uh, they would be able to see quite a bit. And also some of the images on the graphics show, um, you know, basically the points at which the NSA could tap in and listen to a lot of the information as it flowed through. So uh, very interesting and scary stuff, if true. Yes, it, it, it seems to be. I mean, I mean to, it seems like they have, they could, access practically. Now, they may not have real-time access. To, like if I go to Google and I type, I'm typing in stuff using my email or whatever, they might not have real-time access to that. 
but from my understanding, you know, Google does backups. Google well, does they have like that. They 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 move data between their data centers and stuff like that. Right. It's just a part of backups, maybe maybe scans or run redundancy, redundancy and, and stuff like that. So, well, they may scans. not be able to see my real time traffic. They could probably see my data as it moves across the network. Sure. So, and then and of course the other leak that they. Uh, the prism stuff, you know, that was the, that was more real time. Right. It yeah. seems they need so that that these cloud based services and our communication infrastructure in general is is just prime targets for the NSA to do their job, whether their job is uh, necessary using US citizen data and US company data, I don't know. That's probably somebody else to decide. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I'm actively trying to get myself out of the cloud, so I'm getting my heads out of how to get my head out of the cloud. cloud. Yeah. yeah, we may have to return to running our own server infrastructures now. Yeah. yeah. But even then, that's questionable because what if they put some asset inside your network too? So. Well, and, and we've talked about this in the past about, uh, you know, just, just because just because you're using Dropbox doesn't mean you can't encrypt your data before it goes to Dropbox. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Things like that. If you, if you don't trust your cloud provider, you can still take steps to use your cloud provider and, 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 and keep your data there sure. uh, in, in an encrypted format. Just like Google and Yahoo can point to point encrypt their fiber optic traffic to right? ensure the NSA still can't. Sure. Still can't. Decode the, the traffic, right? So there's steps you can take, but I mean, we've, with, all, with all these leaks, there's a there's a lot. There seems a lot to do with weakening of encryption, random number generators, and all that. I mean, what encryption can you trust? Yep. You know, when you're, when you're using encryption, and uh, who who can you trust anymore? Well, especially if you're a, a foreign company, you're a foreign national, and you're not doing anything wrong, but how well do you trust the NSA not to share your information with uh, companies inside the U.S.? I mean, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of foreign uh, intelligence services have taken information they've gathered through corporate espionage and given it to their own industries. We don't they claim that that doesn't happen here in the U.S. But if another foreign intelligence service is doing similar techniques to acquire data, just like NSA is doing. Uh, where are they handing that information? Is it going to their own industrial uh, base? So a lot of questions here, and um, if the NSA can do it, there's no reason why the other well-funded intelligence agencies can't do it either, as well as welcome or weaken the infrastructure of this particular company and open up back doors that others can exploit as well. So it's all very problematic. Right, and I think there's more leaks to come oh, as far as this. The, the Snowden archive. The Snowden archive, yes. So, barely yeah. that. Right. All right. So, uh, I guess that's it for this week. Uh, thank you, Keith. Uh, I'm Preston Wiley. Have a safe and secure day.